Hello, great evening to you. Warm welcome to Prime Business with me, Pius Kojobaka. To our very first story, government is set to roll out fresh policy measures that will place some restrictions on rice and chicken imports in the coming months. Joy Business is learning that details could be rolled out in the media budget review. But what has influenced this? And can the economy handle this policy move? More in this report. Government through the Trade Ministry has been engaging some players in the industry about this move and making some justification for this program. Based on what we have picked up, this is part of broader import regulation bill that will be captured under a fresh legislative instrument that is already being prepared for consideration by parliament. When passed, it will target rice, frozen chicken, and also fruit juice as well. The proposal now is to restrict rice importation by some 40%. This will allow local farmers and other firms in the country to take up the remaining 60%. Sources say the policy may take off this year as details will be captured in the mid-year review. Well, even before this policy takes off, some industry players are raising concerns about how government is planning to implement the program. Some of them are also raising some concerns about the supposed local firms that are being taxed to supply the rice locally. Some have also maintained that the local market has not got the capacity to supply the remaining 60% of rice demand for the country. They are even warning that the policy could result in hikes in prices of rice and frozen chicken. Some players in the grain business as well as the commodity trading sector have raised concerns about the policy. They maintained that the economy is not ready for these import restrictions. John Awuni is a trader in the commodity trading business. I see the plan of the government to introduce restrictions in rice and chicken imports into the country as totally ill-timed, wrong and unwarranted. As a researcher and one who has deeply been involved in the rice sector for well over two decades, I don't see pillars laid by the previous government, nor this current government, to warrant this action overnight. I see from the policy document of the government a complete business plan put together by one or two people for the benefit of a few at the expense of the ordinary Ghanaian. Indeed, let no one be deceived that this action is nationalistic and for that matter good. Currently, a bet of about 1.2 kilos is about 120 cities and this can hardly satisfy a, a family of about six. The quest of the government to create the quota system for rice and chicken imports is a recipe for complete corruption, daylight robbery. Who does the allocation and what is the person's interest against the collective interest of the nation? Players in the poultry sector are still filled with memories of happiness when we took the same route in President Muhammad's era. Quotas have never served the interests of any nation besides the individual interest. What we are going to see with the introduction of the quota system for rice and poultry imports is a sharp rise in the prices of these products, not because they will be sold in the market, but because players will pass the cost of bribes Pay to, 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 to those who will be granting these quotas to the consumer. So for those Ghanaians who are about to celebrate this policy, calling it very good and nationalistic, be prepared, be ready to pay more for rice and chicken than you are currently doing. Moving on to some other stories, about 850,000 Ghanaians have been pushed into poverty as a result of inflation over the past two years. Statistics captured by the World Bank revealed that high inflation and low growth have had a toll on the vulnerable segments of the population. According to the Bretton Woods Institution, food insecurity worsened by the last quarter of 2022 when inflation was at its peak. Now, to this end, economist Dr. Presla Chumesi Bafo is calling on government to design a well-targeted social investment policy in agriculture to protect the poor from inflation. She spoke at the 7th Ghana Economic Update, which was held under the theme Price Surge, Unraveling Inflation's Toll on Poverty and Food Security. According to the World Bank Group's 7th Ghana Economic Update, inflation in 2022 pushed 850,000 individuals into poverty while contributing to putting nearly a quarter of all households at stressed levels of food insecurity and roughly 
823,000 people at crisis or emergency levels of food insecurity. According to the Bretton Woods Institution, it is unclear when the global pressure on prices will fall and thus it is primarily incumbent upon the government of Ghana to take measures to protect the poorest and vulnerable who have been heavily impacted from inflation. Economist with the World Bank, Kwabna Jan Kwachi, described the issue as worrying. It's quite worrying because um, government has been working hard to actually bring people out of poverty. So um, such a news should be something that uh, should be a concern for all. But of course, um, we know that there are efforts that government has been making already. For example, um, if you remember in the presentation that we said that government had already doubled LEAP benefits. So that's one way that, for example, the government is, and there are many more um, social protection pro programs that the government is actually putting up to be able to um, and bring people out of the po uh, poverty. In a bid to mitigate the impact of inflation on food security, Kwabna Jan Kwachi said policymakers must enable farmers to adjust to global demand and take advantage of market opportunities. He further urged government to take rapid measures to protect the most vulnerable, particularly since inflation in 2023 could be higher. When it comes to food security, food insecurity, we have to beef up the agricultural sector because that's really how prices can affect impact prices as far as food is concerned. So that's one way of doing that. And in doing that, we have to empower farmers to be able to react to the global issues. And in reacting to global issues fast enough, definitely food prices will come down and therefore impact on the affordability. And then uh, the poor can actually get the right amount of nutrition to be able to survive. Speaking to Joy Business on the issue, Economist Dr. Prisla Chumesi Bafwa called on government to design a well-targeted social investment policy in agriculture to protect the poor from inflation. The fact that food prices still constitute significantly to um, um, the headline inflation is an indicator for us to look at policies that are addressing issues in the agricultural sector towards food production because if those policies are working then essentially food prices would be reasonable and then inflation can be curtailed. And for me the issue that sticks out is the fact that the high cost of fertilizer is translating directly into the cost of food and as a country I think that we should look at alternatives of domestic production of fertilizer and so that we can wean ourselves off um, the dependence on import of these things that will have a direct impact on the prices of goods and services in our country. Still on food matters the Chamber of Agribusiness Ghana is asking government to urgently outline strategies to tackle the potential food insecurity in Ghana following Russia's missiles attack on Ukraine's Black Sea coast. According to the chamber, if urgent steps are not taken, there could be a shortage of cereal and grains among developing economies like Ghana. Already, the World Trade Organization has warned of a global shortage as a result of the development. Reacting to the issue, Chief Executive Officer of the chamber, Anthony Morrison, called for pragmatic measures to avert any food shortage. Uh, for instance, already the poultry sector is struggling, and uh, we also do know that uh, when issues of this nature happen, for instance, we do see a lot of transhuman uh, livestock trans uh, movement between Nigeria, Mali, Cameroon, Ghana, mm. uh, with regards to this plan, that will have some impact. With regards to what is going on in Ukraine, we have a lot of uh, feed additives coming from Ukraine for the aquaculture, the livestock sector. So the likes of lysine, methionine, decassium are all coming through the Black Sea port, through Turkey, into Ghana, or into the West Africa subway. So we should obviously expect some challenges in the areas of uh, poultry production and the aquaculture. Already, we import billions of dollars of uh, frozen chicken and also uh, some fish into the country. Uh, Ghana is about the third largest consumer of fish mm. in Africa. And I that um, this brings to uh, uh, the fact that uh, we need to solve some, some critical problems to, in the country, especially issues of Ganapse that are destroying water bodies. Mm. So um, there's a lot to be done in this case. And uh, I think uh, we'll have to take some very uh, critical measures.
to forestall any challenges to our food security there. Mm. Away from food matters, let's talk banking now. And Managing Director of Republic Bank Ghana PLC, Benjamin Jubuku, has expressed optimism of the bank's banking bouncing back after shocks from the domestic debt exchange program. This is coming after the bank recorded a loss of 22.69 million cities in 2022. According to him, the current measures put together by the Bank of Ghana to stem further deterioration within the space would support banks in the coming months. He was speaking at the annual general meeting of the bank. In spite of the many challenges, the bank maintained a strong balance sheet as its witness, a 20% year-on-year growth in assets from 4.25 billion cities in 2021 to 5.10 billion cities in 2022. This was due to growth in loans and advances which was funded by the deposit growth. Managing Director Benjamin Joboku said the outfit is putting up structures for more growth in other areas. We have a policy and that policy is 40-60. Uh, Therefore, had you not because of the DDP, if you look at the annual statement, the provision that we made as a result of the DDP was about 167 million. And would have made a lot of profit for 2022. So that actually affected our inability to pay the dividend that we're supposed to pay to our shareholders. And um, we believe that 2024, 2025, we should pay dividend to our shareholders. The non-performing loans ratio of the bank also increased to 19% from 15%. Meanwhile, Mr. Joboku explained that this was as a result of an expansion in the NPL portfolio. He expects the non-performing loans ratio to come down by the close of the year. You know, if you look at the economic fundamentals for 2022, Inflation increased to about 54%. And then the exchange rate volatility. We had some exposures in foreign currency. And because of the volatility, we decided to convert most of this foreign currency loan into CDs. So that actually affected our non-performing loan, increasing to about 19%. But if you look at what we published for the first quarter and the second quarter, you realize that that's, those decisions that we took is yielding um, for us. And we believe by December, the non-performing loan ratio will have come down drastically. Okay. For the year 2022, the bank recorded 324 million Ghana cities in operating expenses. James Echen's report for Joy Business. With Ghana's economy seeing an exponential dip in recent times, there have been calls to develop strategic policies in supporting the patronage of green businesses and their products in the country. Ashanti Regional Director at the Ministry of Trades and Industry, Mahmouda Mosman, believes the optimization and patronage of environmentally sustainable enterprises could show up the sinking economy. He says the continuous dependence on imported goods would not only throw the country into economic difficulties, but also threaten national security. There is more in this report. Speaking at the SNV Green Regional Trade Show held in Kumasi, Ashanti Regional Director of Trade, Mamuda Osman, noted the essence of embracing a green and circular economy through industrialization. Under the Green Project, I have witnessed entrepreneurs come out with very attractive and useful products from waste. Some are producing raincoats, laptop bags, etc. from waste sachet rubbers. Production of reusable sanitary pads. Fertilizer from cocoa has charcoal briquettes, organic compost, among others. Global economy is sinking for various reasons. One major factor that makes Ghana's economy to struggle is lack of adequate industrialization. Making, it, making us dependent on imports. 
The three-day exhibition and dialogue held under the theme Sustainable Trade Investments, the Future for the Ghanaian Economy was in partnership with the Ministry of Trade and Industry, GIZ Ghana, Association of Ghana Industries and Ghana Enterprises Agency. The trade show brought together over 50 green businesses from SNV's Green Incubation and Acceleration Program in the region who showcased their products and services. Project Manager of the Green Project at SNV Ghana, Lowali Sada, indicated that support to green businesses in the country warrants a sustainable and environmentally friendly future. Um, the trade show is just opportunity that are given to very relevant SMEs that have been supported through incubation and acceleration to just be exposed to a larger market to get network to expand ideas and business and of course above all to improve the sales of the products that are green products so um, that uh, the, the trade show is one of the key activity that really support to improve the strongness, the quality, and the greenness of the, the SMEs. The Association of Ghana Industries reiterated commitment to supporting businesses, calling on the citizenry to protect the environment through patronage of renewable businesses. Thomas Apam Atibila is Ashanti and Bono Ahafo Regional Manager of AGI. In AGI, since we partnered SNB for the promotion of green activities. We have been sensitizing our members to incorporate sustainable activities in their operations. So now, if you visit any AGI company, you can see the way we do our operations differently because we have in mind our customers and our neighbors. Some green exhibitors at the trade show who spoke to Lab Business says the event has attracted to them potential buyers. With the help of SMV, we are able to increase our production. Now SMV supported me with some amount for me to construct my warehouse and then they have given me a chance also to have a market uh, penetration. So as we can see here, it's through SMV that a lot of people have come to know about this product that we have. For Joy News, my name is Emmanuel Brightquick. As part of its quest to support the construction sector, Tanning Group Ghana has launched its Dongfeng Tracks. According to its head of sales, Rebecca Ofori Aye, the move is also to provide consumers durable products that will stand the test of time. Speaking to Joy Business at the unveiling event, she said the construction industry needs a reform. Target audience for those tracks are road construction road construction other construction companies like the real estate and then with the light duty trucks we are targeting the delivery companies the moving companies the logistics companies and um, other companies like um, whoever has to the distributing channels so we are focusing on the distributing channels for the light duty trucks and the heavy duty trucks as i said basically on the construction company, any form of construction company, the Dunfen tracks are there for you. We are competitive in terms of um, the pricing because this price comes with a high specs. The technologies in these tracks cannot be seen in the Ghanaian market. The durability, the comfort driving, the safety and security features of these vehicles are top notch. But if we want to match up the price with the ones in the market, we would go higher above. But with Tanic, we stay competitive because customer is our focus. Now, Chief Executive of SES HD Plus Ghana, Adelaide Bill Williams, has reiterated calls for equal opportunity for women in leadership roles of organizations. According to her, women have unique perspectives that aid in growth and development. She was speaking at an event here in Accra. 
The maiden edition of the HD Plus Leaders Experience provided a platform for women leaders in various positions to share untold stories of their leadership journey. In an interview with Joy Business, Chief Executive of SES HD Plus Ghana, Adelaide Abiu Williams said, Women must be given equal opportunities to contribute to growth and development. This is a platform that has been created for women leaders to share their experiences to empower other women who are in leadership positions and also empower up-and-coming women who aspire into leadership. But diversity is, is key, right, because um, if you listen to the discussions that we had earlier this afternoon, it's not about women against men, it's about how the male and female can complement each other because we bring unique perspectives, unique talents, unique abilities to the table and this is what we want to consolidate to these discussions. Executive Director of Salt and Light Ministries, Dr. Joyce Ayi, added that more needs to be done to bridge the gender gap in organizations. Throughout history, women have had to overcome numerous barriers. We are all witnesses to this. Fancy pan thinking that a man can make coffee and not getting employed. The barriers are still there, but breaking them a bit at a time. But so much more needs to be done. What I'd like us to realize is that there's great and immense potential, and we're living in very, very wonderful times. Now we can do almost anything and everything that we want to do. Women were also encouraged to work tirelessly to merit leadership roles in their organizations. Let's now dash to the international world for some business news. Thanks so much for watching Prime Business with me, Pius Kujobaka. You can get great stories when you log on to myjoyonline.com forward slash business. Good night.